Honestly, you know, we don't always like to swallow those pills. It's like Buckley's. It tastes awful, but it works, right? The Holy Spirit might say, I, I don't appreciate the jokes you're telling. Or maybe the Holy Spirit would say, you know what, every time you get around a certain crowd, you tend to always start to, you know, dig up dirt on another person. Or you tend to begin to, you know, kind of get away from what the things of God or something. And the Holy Spirit might say, I don't appreciate that. And if you'll just keep a heart before the Lord, says, Lord, forgive me. I was wrong for that. And begin to do that. The Lord will also comfort you and show you a better way. And you'll move right into the traffic. <clears throat> we want to allow him to come alongside you. You need to re remember that. Uh, the parakletos is another word. The counselor, comforter, come alongside. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to be corrected. But in your correction, he's also going to counsel and comfort you. He's going to give you hope. He's going to show you a new way. When we were on our 20th wedding anniversary, which is coming up to five years ago, Sam decided she wanted to go do something silly like parachute. What was it, 11,000 feet? 16,000 feet. 16,000 feet, and if you watch the video, it's actually on Facebook, um, she'd come out of an airplane, and she was strapped to this gentleman, and as she was coming out of the airplane, she bumped her head on the, on the, on the airplane. And good thing, actually, she didn't uh, go unconscious. If you were the only person, that would not have been good, flying 16,000 feet unconscious. But she did, but she was strapped to somebody that knew what they were doing. That's kind of like the Holy Spirit reigning on the inside of you. He knows what he's doing. So if you're trying to figure out what's wrong with that truck and you just don't know what out and nobody else knows, you know what? God knows. If you're trying to figure out what mission program to go on, God knows. If you know trying to figure out what Bible school to attend, God knows. If you're trying to figure out which husband or wife, or no husband, boy or girl to marry, you're, God knows. And so those are opportunities where you allow the Holy Spirit to come on the inside of you. Now, the Word also says that let the Holy Spirit be your umpire. If you feel like you've swallowed a lead balloon... That's an indication sometimes that maybe you're doing the wrong thing, okay? If you feel like you ever just had that sinking feeling like, boy, I just, I'm really uncomfortable doing this. I remember as a teenager, I was sleeping over at a guy's house, and I was totally restless the whole night. I was just, I was just, literally, it was like I swallowed a lead balloon. I was so uncomfortable. I just had this sinking feeling. I actually walked home. I said, I can't stay. I walked home. And it was quite a walk, and I was always a bit of a fat kid, and so it was not a fun walk, but I walked home. It was better to walk home than to stay in that situation. And long story short, those kids eventually were doing drugs and all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm not saying I was better than them, but the Holy Spirit was drawing me, showing me an area that I should not be. And so I had to make that decision. Maybe you're, you know, now you want to be careful because that kind of messed up my engagement because, not the drugs part, but, but the... Um, the sinking feeling. You've got to be able to gauge if the Holy Spirit is guiding you saying you're good or you're not good. If the Holy Spirit is saying you're safe, then just relax and enjoy the relationship that you're in. If you've got a sinking feeling on the inside that says, you know what, every time I think about Sandra and talk about Sandra, I just get this feeling on the inside that God is pulling me away. Then that could be an, in, in, an indication that God is saying that God has something better for you. Now, the difference there, though, was I had a lot of anxiety. And so your anxiety can be something that you can think, well, is that the Holy Spirit telling me yes or the Holy Spirit telling me no? And I drove myself crazy for years trying to figure it out. Well, we know that was the best decision I ever made because Nicole Brock said to me, look, unless you're going to be really deathly sick at the altar, you just go ahead and get married. Truthfully, because I was going for counseling, trying to figure out what do I do, what do I do? I don't want to disappoint God. I want to make sure I have the right girl. And Sans may be thinking, oh, boy, I wish you <laughs> but the point is this, you can get that, that calm feeling on the inside knowing that everything's okay, and that's the Holy Spirit drawing you into where you should be. Maybe God brings you a new friend. Maybe God brings you into a new job or a situation. You just know this is the right place to be. Maybe the pay isn't what you thought, but this is the right place to be. Better to do that than be at the high-paying job that's going to go broke in six months, because the Holy Spirit knows. Now, you need to be able to settle that anxiety, though, and figure out, is it God or isn't it God? And you do that through praying in the Holy Spirit, but also knowing that the Comforter lives on the inside of you, and He will show you through the written Word of God. Sometimes you're going to be anxious. I remember when we bought our first house, I can remember laying in bed that night, it was midnight when the real estate guy called and said, we bought the house, and suddenly the anxiety went through the roof. I had peace about buying the house. But suddenly I was $100,000 in debt. 
real quick, boom. And my anxiety was through the roof. You guys will experience maybe a little of that too. But it isn't God saying no. So you need to learn to begin to differentiate between what is peace, let peace be your umpire, and what is anxiety. Because anxiety, I don't know why I'm talking about this, maybe somebody needs to know this. Anxiety is not from God. But you can be led by anxiety, and that will not take you to where God wants you to be. You need to follow the divine flow of the Holy Spirit, where the areas of peace and comfort. And so that's what God is talking about here. Now, um, did we read John 14 yet? Yes. We did? Okay. Um, <coughs> Colossians 1.9. Let's just go there for a minute. Colossians 1.9. <coughs> This is, this is an example of how can I get myself to the place where I can be yielded to the Holy Spirit and it will start to come very natural. You ever just do things very natural? You've probably been wrenching for so long, Matt, you just put your tools in the right spot every time. Do you have to think, okay, does it go here or does it go there? Or, or if I was to say to you, where is the Robertson screwdriver? Could you tell me what drawer it's in? Okay, so you just know. Well, that's something that you begin to just know all the time. And so the Holy Spirit wants you to get there. Now, this is a prayer, because we just finished doing a study on prayer. But this is a prayer that's very important here. And uh, we want to look at verse 9 for a minute. So Colossians 1.9, it says, For this reason, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Wouldn't that just be awesome? The knowledge of his will, that's that the, the greatest task that all of us as Christians have, the knowledge of his will and have spiritual understanding. Wouldn't it be awesome to know that? So we know that the Holy Spirit's been saying, first of all, be yielded to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit wants to counsel you and he wants to comfort you. But we also want to know his will and have spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, fully pleasing him. You say, Pastor, that seems like an impossible thing. He's going to give us some... Some, some keys here. That you would be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, the son of love, in whom we have redemption through the blood and the forgiveness of our sin. Now, I want you to get this. First of all, this passage here showing you to live pleasing and to love God is to have a revelation that he has qualified us to be partakers. Partakers of what? Partakers of an inheritance. Partakers of an inheritance. Partakers of something that was accomplished at the cross for you. The word there, qualified, also means authority. He has given you authority to be a partaker. And then it says here in verse 13, and has delivered us from the power of darkness. You've been delivered from the power of darkness. You've been delivered from the power of darkness. You, you have a covenant right to stand against the enemy and say, you're not going to steal my kids any longer. I'm going to be yielded to the Holy Spirit, and if there's things that we need to change, then we as a family are going to change them. But, Mr. Devil, you are not going to steal my family any longer. You are not going to steal our health any longer. You, whatever the situation is, I'm asking you to be yielded, but in that yielding, you're also being comforted, and God says it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because, I want to show you something else here. If you got, if you're Colossians 1.9, you're there, right? Amen? We want to go into the book of Ephesians for a minute. This is a prayer that I encourage everybody to pray mm -hmm. every day. Every day. Not too far from Colossians. <clears throat> and in verse 15, so, so Ephesians 1.15, it says, Therefore, as also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of the saints... I do not cease to give thanks for you and make a mention of you in my prayers. Now, this is, this is what you should pray every day for you, for your family, that you would have this, okay? Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
How many know you can have a knowledge of a lot of things? You ever, you ever, you ever wanted to know how to, you know, how stuff works, right? There's a book that's called How Stuff Works, and you can get knowledge on how all kinds. You ever met somebody that just knows how stuff works? You just know you do this, and you do this, and you do this, and you do this, and you can make it work. You talk to the, the old-time farmers, and they can tell you all the shortcuts and things that work because they've done it. But God is showing you here in the spirit realm and in your Christian life, it says that he would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom and revelation. Well, that's talking about, so Matt's working, you know, or maybe you've got a situation where nobody can figure out the problem. And you say, Lord, your word says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. And God said, he's going to give it to you liberally. And so he begins to sow that into your life. You get a prompting to say, try this or do this. You know, I remember we were spending years ago, we were spending a fortune on, uh, we used to have to buy our water. And so I thought it was the girls were having too many baths. And so we said, you know what? No more baths like this. We're just going to share bath water. We didn't really do that. But we were going through crazy amounts of water. Well, what was happening is the valve was, was stuck. There's a foot valve in the pump. And if the foot valve is stuck, every water that it, if it was drawing it, it would be fine. But then after we left and we were no longer having baths, it would just keep draining out the cistern. And so it was running back, and then we were losing our water. It was actually, it was going actually into the, into the septic bed. And so I didn't know what to do. And, you know, I was praying, Lord, I, I didn't have money for a plumber. And these, these were $100 tanks that we were, you know, getting water from. And I remember just believing God. I said, Lord, just give me wisdom on how to fix this. $13 a TSC. I just needed a backflow valve. I put it in there, stopped the problem. To this day, it's still there, and it solved a whole lot of problems. But, but I took the time to ask. And I, I, I say, again, in those areas, if you take the time to pray prayers and to talk to the Lord, He'll save you time. Because sometimes, you know, you can, you can spend so much time running around trying to chase your tail to do this, to do this, to do this, to do this. And God says, those things you're doing, they're okay, but there's a real good one right here. Here's a real easy answer right here. And so if you'll slow down and let that word digest in your life and slow down and let the Holy Spirit begin to talk to you. He's not talking to you because he's a motor mouth. He's talking to you because he's got some good things to tell you. He's your comforter and he's your counselor. And so notice it says here that we would receive the knowledge of him. Verse 18, Lord, that the eyes of my understanding would be enlightened. Lord, that you would know that you would show me what is the hope and the calling. Think about all the things you as a Christian spend your whole Christian life trying to find out what's the hope, what's the calling, what is God saying, what does God want, and God says it all right here. That you would give me the eyes of your understanding, that I would be enlightened, that I would know what is your hope and what is your calling. Lord, show me what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance. You ever struggle saying, Lord, what is too much? Lord, what is, you know, we don't want to talk about money, Lord. We don't want to talk about houses. We don't want to talk about stuff. But how about just let the Lord reveal to you what he has for you? Amen. Right? Instead of trying to turn on the TV and trying to figure out, well, if I sow this amount of money and I get a, a gold ring, or if I sow this, I get healing oil or whatever, right? I've got my own opinions on stuff like that. But why don't you let the Holy Spirit guide and direct you and let you know what God is saying? And then you don't have to apologize for what you believe God has told you to do. You say, I'm, I'm yielded to the Holy Spirit. Okay? You're not going to become a spiritual kook if you do this. Sometimes when, when you're not yielding to the Holy Spirit and not keeping it lined up with the Word of God, you can get out there. Okay? 